to Nasty Knuckles, the Hockey Outlaws Podcast, with your host, Terry Nasty Sotomayor, and former Philadelphia Flyer Enforcer, Riley Cote, as they go behind the scenes with your favorite NHL players. Time to face off. Welcome back. I'm Riley Cote. This week, as a Christmas special, we're going to share some of our favorite stories of 2021. First, we're going to start off with the ultimate winner. This guy is a former All-Star, former captain, Memorial Cup winner, Calder Cup trophy winner, World Junior gold medalist, Olympic gold medalist, and two-time Stanley Cup winner, Mike Richards. To talk about, uh, you know, moving on with the Flyers and then your time in Philly uh, as a flyer and then eventually being the captain of the flyers. I mean, you know, it's a unique city, obviously they're hard on their players. Um, you know, win, lose or draw, they're expecting just, you know, some grunt work and, you know, honest effort. Like just talk about your time in Philly as a player and, 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 and as a, just as a flyer. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. I loved it in Philly. I uh, always, look forward to getting back to the season we had good teams really other than the second year we the second year we were (laughs) We're, (laughs) worst year in flyers history to be back (laughs) you're 40 terrible (laughs) you're 40 yeah we were out of it by like american thanksgiving (laughs) (laughs) it it was not going well (laughs) but other than that year it was awesome (laughs) um but even like how crazy it is that we were that bad a second year. And then the, the next year we lost out to Pitt. I in think. the final, in his conference final. Conference final. final. Yeah, yeah, like what a, the turnaround but with Hartsey, Chemo, Danny, like a bunch of guys coming in. But Jason um, Smith. Jason Smith. Jason Smith. Yeah. Hatch. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, like it was, it was insane how – quick of a turnaround that was but yeah. um yeah it was always good the flyers you know i got nothing bad to say about them ever like mr snyder was incredible to me um just the fact of getting to know him a little bit and just how awesome of a person he was he'd go to offer tickets to the 76ers games and, and that was so much fun going there with him um and then just the, the crowds there, obviously, were like a Saturday afternoon or a Sunday afternoon against either the Rangers or Pitt um, when they sung God Bless America. Like, that would just, man, make the hair on your neck stand oh, right. up every time. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. Even to this day, anytime I hear that song, it's literally, I still get goosebumps just from, from hearing that. So... Yeah, it was fun. We had a we had a, uh, a bunch of good teams. Still, probably one of the biggest disappointments of my career was losing to Chicago in the finals that year. And yep. uh, I still think if Ray Emery was didn't get hurt that year, the late great, um, I think we still would have. I think we would have won the cup that year. But. It is what it is. It was a pretty cool experience to, to yeah. see how how amazing that city was and um, how much they were behind us. Richie, like to me, you were you were. Uh, I mean, the perfect captain in my, in my eyes. I know Riles. We've we've talked about this before. Like maybe not the loudest. You know, losing your shit in the locker room, which I think actually is a good thing. So because you're, yeah. you're calm, but. Uh, no one could argue the way you played the game on the ice. Uh, I mean, d- d- you're a captain, man. No matter what what you want to say, you- you're one of the greatest captains uh, I've been around. And, w- w- you know, pretty young when you get named a captain. And in Philadelphia, it's it's uh, it's a tough city like we just talked about. But, you know, what, what were your thoughts about it? Like, I- Yeah. Uh, I remember being a little bit nervous about it. I do remember – um like homer and johnny and i all had a meeting and i remember saying like 
if this is your like if this is what is what you want right now then then i'll be the captain but if it's like something that like you're giving it to me now because you have no one else or if you're giving it to me now because you think in a few years <clears throat> excuse me um i'm going to be the captain like if it's now what you want then obviously i'm going to accept and i'll do the best job i can and they were both like extremely like dead set that like this is what they wanted now and that gave me a lot of confidence um to accept it and take it and um i think that from that point on it, it just gave me a lot of confidence that what i was doing was fine and i didn't have to change anything or and then <clears throat> um like i said before you kind of just like pick things up the year before jason smith was our captain and like he was to me what a captain should be stuck up for his teammates he never complained about anything um he just kind of went about his business and, and that's kind of what i tried to do too rick bone i'm not sure if you uh i've watched a lot of hockey yet <clears throat> i know usually you tune in more during the playoffs if i'm not mistaken but uh were you able did you happen to see uh, jake Borchek's interview yeah i did <laughs> were there any times you just wanted to say that <laughs> was, <laughs> something probably. like that i just love how you could tell he was trying to bottle it up but he couldn't <laughs> yeah <laughs> you uh -oh. know what he he's like i wasn't i'm not even gonna answer the question and then he started answering the question yeah. but then I, like he had it too bottled up he just couldn't yeah. he's like weasel <laughs> oh, he's so he is one person and it, it's pretty tough to bottle that man up yeah and, you know it is what it is i mean yeah. sometimes you just can't hold it in and that was one of those cases and then you probably should sometimes you you just have to let it fly so um yeah it's, i saw that and i just started laughing because i definitely felt that a little bit um, yeah probably <laughs> no outbursts like that i probably did a <laughs> little bit better job holding it in but oh man sometimes it's needed to be said yeah right oh, keep them um, too yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's exactly what he was trying to do, I think. Exactly. Yeah. I think he um, did. <laughs> yeah, I think he did. Yeah. Um, Richie, <clears throat> one of the uh, one of the things that I've always thought about, and, and Riley and I have talked about it before, um, we had that run to the Stanley Cup, which, I mean, for me personally, that was one of the best years I've ever had in hockey. We, we had the outdoor game in Boston. Unfortunately, we lost that one in OT, but it's still what a, what an experience it was, man. I mean, Fenway, it snowed a bit. It was it was yeah. just so cool. Um, and then uh, the Olympics, which we we didn't bring up yet, where you won yeah. again uh, yeah. the gold medal, um, stripping <laughs> this young fella here of a of a gold medal. But no, seriously, it was it was an awesome um, that that two weeks was was crazy, and yeah. I mean. Oh God, I just had so much fun anyway. And it was cool because I kind of, I couldn't be with you a lot, but we did see each other almost daily. And I did get to share a little bit of it with you and, and watching you win was, was cool and, and prongs too. Um, even though I was heartbroken, don't worry about it, Rick Bone. Yeah. <sighs> but uh, no, but seriously, what I was going to say was um, we go from that year, you know, then we lose in the finals. And like you said, we were kind of banged up, which I'm sure they were too. Yeah. We were missing razor. Um, I thought Lates and, and Bush did a hell of a job getting yeah. us there, you know, oh, yeah. one of another, but, but at the same time, like you said, uh, the late great Ray Ray, man, he was, he was something else, but uh, the next year is what I was going to get to. We've got a good team again. We go into the playoffs. We ended up winning uh, in seven against Buff. Well, Prongs was hurt the whole time and, and Buffalo, they played well, man. I mean, you know, and they had Miller, yeah. you know, like, it wasn't like they were a, a, an easy out, but uh, we found a way. We were down. You guys were down three two. Big, uh, I think Vila. You assisted Vila, I think, if I'm not mistaken, in Game Six, and then we just pumped them at home. That place was going bananas. Um, we are. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. And um, the next round again. I'm not saying we would have beat Boston. They, they went on to win the cup. They had yeah. a really good team, and they probably wanted to kill us from the year before. Yeah, which we can get into that in a minute. But my point was, 
that team, even that year, the second year after the cup, like, I feel like dismantling that team, like, God, we were still yeah. young. Like you guys were still like, you know, mid twenties yeah. and looking back, if you just look at that team, it's like, Holy cow, man. Like that was yeah. a good, good hockey team and a close knit group. Yeah. Yeah. We, I always am so impressed with like, say when Pittsburgh repeated a few years ago, 16, 17, 17 whatever, yeah. 17, 18, whatever it was. Um, that next year is so tough after you go to the finals, especially losing. Like, oh, yeah. It took me like three, four weeks just to like scrape myself off the couch. Cause you know, people think that like when you lose, you have so much motivation to get in the gym and do, you know, that, but when you put so much time and effort and your body is broken and I just remember waking up that next day and I was so sore, so tired and you just have nothing, you know, like you go through that long of a, I think I forget the exact number, but between the NHL, the Olympics, and then going to the finals, I forget the exact number, but it was close to like a hundred hockey games that year. And then you have a short summer, then you, then you're literally right back at it. Um, but yeah, I, I think Boston was just raring to go because we came back on them, whatever, three, oh, three, three level, whatever, however you say it, and come back and win in that series. And then they swept us. But I just remember everybody was just, by the end of that year after we went to the finals, everyone was beat up, tired. Yeah. Like, it, it's not easy. So um, to get back to your point about that young team, I remember – being at a ball game with um, Peter, um, the president. Peter Luco. Luco, sorry, Peter Luco. And we actually got into that conversation about how we had such a young group of great hockey players and great people. And um, if we can keep this team together is what we were saying, we could – easily win in the next few years right. and we didn't win that year but you know I, I think sometimes when you want to win so much you you kind of like everything has to be right now and so they traded Bobrovsky that's right and you know obviously not a not a great <laughs> trade but they needed goaltending so right. uh, and they thought that was the best chance of winning so they brought Breeze in but just like from what was it conference finals I think it was first or second round we lost and then finals I think that was a three-year stretch something like that anyways yeah. mm -hmm. but you could tell we were like just on the edge you know right. like you just kind of had to go through some bumps to get to where we wanted to go and then right as we started feeling those bumps the one year of Boston sweeping us and then it seemed like everything was just like yeah starting to kind of pull apart it, it was it was pretty disappointing to be honest with you it, it really was I think I you know even like uh, I was a pigeon I'm a, a kind of equipment guy but yeah I just remember even the pigeon staff the and league. us being like what's that the best pigeon in the league <laughs> <laughs> nonetheless the pigeon but uh uh just you know thinking like dude we're gonna do this and then you know like next yeah. year or two like are you you really could feel it and then just yeah. the the devastation of uh, uh the everything that happened after that um yeah. like i kind of get it too though like mr snyder let's be honest, was getting older at that point. And he just wanted to win so bad, right. you know, where it just turned to, there was a few years of, you know, goaltending woes. And, and to get back, like, Lates and Boost did such an amazing job. But, like, Razor started the year as our number one goaltender. It, it is what it is. Yeah. But um, he just wanted a goaltender so bad that I, I'm – assuming that Mr. Snyder said something to Homer about, 
do yeah. anything you can to do it. Mm-hmm. And next thing you know, it, the team looks a lot different th- than what it yeah. did. So um, I get it. I get the whole business side of it. But to say that I wasn't disappointed and a little bit hurt about being traded, that's uh, that would be a lie. The funniest, it, maybe not interaction, but like everybody in Philly was always so awesome. And, it, you know, like you said, there'd be a handful of guys, which there's a handful of guys for everything that are yeah. always a little bit of jerks. But we were, it was during the playoffs, we were at Budokan eating dinner the night before a game. And I remember this guy like get it, literally getting mad at me that I was out eating, that I wasn't at home getting ready for the game. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I got to eat. Like, <laughs> Hey, listen, Richie, he wanted it more than you. Yeah, yeah he, he did. I'll, he ne- did. I'll never forget JV, JVR uh, did something at the uh, Philadelphia Union Um way back I mean, he might he was probably his rookie year but he had to he did an appearance there and jimmy rollins was with him oh and yeah. so they were sitting there talking and you know jvr was obviously a young kid yeah. j roll was j roll yeah. and uh they got to talking about the fans and and he was like yeah it's great here he goes the only problem is there's some that think yeah. they actually want to win more than you do yeah. as the oh, athlete. Yeah. And that's what drives you nuts when they're like that. And it, yeah. but, you know, it's it, like it's, the one percentile. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah. You I know, mean, the 99% is awesome. Yeah. And yeah. you know, it's maybe a picture, which is the easiest thing in the world to do, yeah. but it's, mm-hmm. yeah, that's a good way to put it. That 1% yeah. feels like they want to win more than us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys yeah. are out there putting your balls on the line, doing every, everything yeah. you can, you know. And you, you, you should be eating a home cooked meal, Mike. Yeah, you should be at home resting, getting ready <laughs> yeah. for the game. Like, okay. But he was like, no joke. He was actually mad that I was there. <laughs> but oh, oh man. Well, it was all good. I had a good time. Now we're going to jump to episode five with one of the biggest beauties in the league, Jake Voracek. Jakey talked about how demanding things were during his time in Philly, including teammates and coaches, and how much he loved playing here. There's a lot of emotions. Exactly. exactly. You get stuck in a zone for two minutes. You're dead tired. You can't breathe. You block the shot. You got hit, probably. Yeah. You you know, that's the last thing you want to you want to do is to get yelled at from the coach. Jake, fuck Jake. Get the fuck out. Wake the fuck out. (laughs) Jake used to come back to the bench uh, when I was with the team, and uh, sometimes it you know, have a long shift. He's tired. And it was so funny because Lappy used to come up to you and try to talk and jig it. Let me fucking get my breath. <laughs> so then it turned into Lappy would come and stand beside me. If Jake was sitting in front of me, he would wait. And then like 20 seconds go by, Jake would be like, what? Yeah, right. You know, yeah, like, way he knows it's, it's coming. Yeah. Lappy would just stand uh, there. Hey, wait on you, you know, like. Yeah, we have, we have so many good stories, you know, like. Yeah. That's, that's sometimes during the game, some shit happens. Oh, yeah. That's, that's an emotional that's so game, funny. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so funny. Like, we had me, Simmer. I remember, like, it was some, I don't know what year was that. Like, we were pretty demanding on our power play, right, in Philly. That's why I think we were so good, mm-hmm. because we were demanding. If one power play didn't go well, all right, you started looking around, you're like, all right, guys, break the fuck up. Yeah. The second power play step in and something got, got screwed. It was a battle, like, on the bench. Like, oh, yeah. Fuck you, G. Fuck you, Simmer. <laughs> Simmer's bitching at us. Then fucking, I'm getting between them, and then I fucking, you know, telling Simmer to go fuck himself. <laughs> That's the truth. Too, and man. Simmer's telling me, fucking, let's go, let's go right now. I'm like, let's go. So I'm like, <laughs> yeah. And it settles. We go out on the next power play, and they start, start zipping yeah, around. Right, yeah. We come it's back, true. and we just, all right, that's the way to do it. It's, it's and after after the period, you come to the locker room, and we just laugh about it. You, yeah. know? Oh, yeah. you know what I mean? It's, so it's one of those things, too, that you've seen around. Oh, yeah. When you guys would do that, I'd just be like, like, oh, God. Like, yeah. You know, what's going on? And then, like you say, you go out, you score a goal, and everybody's yeah. happy. But yeah. if we could have had, like, that stuff mic just, oh, man. Yeah, just to gold. go back later, and you'd laugh your ass even, off. Even with Chief, you know, I, oh, uh, God. My Chief was like, I basically, I grew as a player under him. Like, you know what I mean? I, I had a break, breakout seasons under him, 13, 14, 14, 15. And uh, like the shit he said sometimes to like, oh, my God. Like, I was <laughs> seriously like you couldn't go on the ice because you were laughing for so long. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Off the ice, he says something and he started laughing. And then it was your turn again. Two and a half, three minutes left. 
and you just <laughs> you jumped on the ice and you were still smiling, you know, like from him, yeah. Rafi, remember with Ralph? Oh god. Yeah. So Ralph went, there was like three or what whatever, or clear cut two on one, three on two, I can't remember right now correctly. And somebody from the other team called for a draft. So, <laughs> so Ralph went, there was a right by the bench. Ralph went and he just dropped it to him, gone the other way, two on one, absolutely, oh, you know, okay. they didn't score. <laughs> You know, Ralphie's face like, oh, yeah. what's your, what was that? <laughs> and then Chief goes like, Rafa, are you fucking brain dead or so? And then all of them just started the dying laughing. And, and Rafa's Ralph, laughing. And Ralphie's like, <laughs> that was uh, such a good memory, man. Like, oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's funny. There's so much, so many little things that are happening, you know, it just makes you crack up. It's, yeah. it's, it's unbelievable. What's it been like? I mean, this is you going into your 10th year with the Flyers now and uh, just the city of Philadelphia and, um, this is uh, it's just adapting to the culture here, and and uh, you know again, m not many players get to play in one city for ten years. Yeah. So you can talk to that a little bit. Yeah, kind of. I was thinking about it the other day. I was like, "Fuck, it's my tenth year already here in the Philly. That's pretty good." Oh you know? yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta do something. Here, yeah. You gotta do something right to stay here for such a long time. And uh, yeah, it's like my second home. You know, like I mean, if you are, I don't know, if you would be anywhere for ten years, if you would call it a second home, but. Philly is awesome. I mean, you know, you have four sports teams, you have a great restaurant, so you have just every time you play at home in front of the crowd, it's it's demanding 100%. Yeah. Shoot. Shoot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yes. But, uh, I got to lose it. Oh, they, they don't understand it. <laughs> I know. With, with my shot from top of the circle, wrister, when the, there is no one in front of the net, there is no fucking way I'm scoring. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know what would have to happen. The goalie pull is growing and just fall yeah, out right. of the net yeah. or something. I don't know. I'm not scoring. So, you know, with me holding the puck extra second and then finding the empty se uh, the open seam somewhere, back door or something, that's a better option for me than just wrist it at the net. You know what I mean? Like, And everybody's trying to change me right now. Like, I still have some people, not like the fans, but overall from the hockey communities. You got to shoot more. You got to shoot more. I was like, guys, do you understand that you guys don't have the vision as I do? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Sure, like, yeah. I see the ice completely differently than you. Yeah, right. And you standing in a completely different uh, uh, angle right. that I'm having a puck right now. Like, I see different things, right? Obviously. Yeah. When you yeah. go, I, 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 my favorite thing is that when you go in two on one, I would say when I'm going two on one, eight out of ten, I make the pass through the D. And if he hits it right, it's a it's a goal, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So, but two out of t ten times, if you fuck up, they're like, "Oh, you should have shot it." Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. I mean, yeah, should have shot it. Like, if I make that pass, which I usually do, like it's a goal, right? Like, shot it. Yeah, right. Of course, I should have shot it if I fucked up that. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Say after you know the what fact, I mean? Right, like, yeah. thanks for advice. Yeah, you know? yeah, right. yeah, yeah. It just, uh, yeah, but it's it's fun. You know what I mean? It's fun to play here. It's fun to. You know, playing those home games, and uh, you know, because if you go, if the team goes, the, and the people pushing awesome. you, and pushing you, and yeah. you can absolutely do things that you couldn't do in any other cities, I think. Next up, Frank the Animal by Lois tells us how he got his historic nickname. Speaking of the uh, the nickname, the animal, what is the storyline behind it? Nasty was giving me a little bit of a one on one. Uh, uh, your first, your pro in Roanoke. Yeah. <laughs> you have some substance behind nah, it? dude, there's funny as shit. Like, I was like, take a, I, <laughs> I went to Roanoke and I was like, just like huge, man. I was like all juiced up, you know what I mean? Like, no. just, I was, it was terrible. It was real bad. And I can fucking <laughs> skate. I was like, you know, so I get off the bus and the whole fucking team's like looking at me and I'm like, what are you fucking looking at? You know, like, <laughs> and they're like, oh, and no one would say that. They're scared. Like Mike James was our goalie. Me and him are real fu good buddies. You know, he's funny as shit. But so they put me to live with him and he tells Roy Somers like no fucking way that I'm living with that guy. You know, I mean, we're like best friends now. But, you know, it, it was like, you know, long story short, we get out. I, I'm like, I can't fucking skate, man. My legs were seizing up. Like, you know, they were so big. I was like, I'm like, fuck this. You know, I'm like, and he's like, well, you got to give an effort. Just go out there. So I skate out to center ice and I line up. So we're, I think we were playing like, um, what the fuck was it? Wheeling, West Virginia or something like that. So I line yeah, up. Wheeling, you, know, then, you know, a slap shot league. They got a hundred fighters. <laughs> yeah. I lines up beside me and he's like looking at me. He doesn't know how to take it. You know what I mean? I'm like, what are you looking at? 
And he's like, nothing. And I'm like, so I fucking punched him. You know what I mean? And I'm like, all right. <laughs> he goes down. He's bleeding all over the place. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? You know, man? So the ref gives me, doesn't even get up. And I'm like, all right. So I skate to the penalty box. I'm sitting in there. Coach is shaking his head. And the, the other team's coach looks over and like, where in the fuck did you get that? <laughs> and, <I'm just> like, <laughs> and they're just laughing. Roy's cracked. Roy was a great guy. He was funny as shit. Yeah. So he's laughing. I get out of the box. I come skating back across the ice, make my way back to the bench. And I'm like, I'm done, man. I'm not skating no more. Fuck this shit. And he's like, you got to try. You got to get in shape. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, okay. So I go cruising out there. I skate around. My legs start hurting. I'm like, I just stop, eh? Hey? And I'm like looking around. The guy skates by me. I tomahawk him. You know what I mean? And like, and then he's like, <laughs> he drops his gloves and I punched him. I hit him right in the front of the helmet. His helmet fell off his head in like two pieces. And I'm like, and I hurt my hand. I was like, fuck. And then he dives down, tries to turtle. I pick him up by the back of the shirt and I got him up in the air and I'm fucking hitting him, you know, like typical Frankie shit. Yeah. He's like half dead. So I throw him on the ground. <laughs> and, uh, I skate back to the box and Roy's like, are you going to try and play? I'm like, no. Every time you put me on ice, I'm just going to fuck someone up. <laughs> and he's like, okay. So I go out there again. And now I'm actually, okay, I'm going to try and play a little bit. So I get the fuck and I'm skating. I'm like, again, you know, I'm out of gas. I'm like, <laughs> I like I gas. The, yeah, I'm out of gas. <laughs> I'm like, oh. So I go stand against the boards and hold the puck, and some idiot decides to run me, bounces right off of me. Hey, I look at him, turn around, grab him, one punch, and knock him out cold. And at that point, this fucking hillbilly, this is big truck. They had, they had a fishing pole with uh, Kentucky fried chicken bucket, and they're flinging it over the boards and reeling it in. And I'm laughing, and he's like, This kid's a fucking animal. And I, I and I went up. I went up to the. They had a bar, so I got tossed out of the game. I went up to the bar, and the, whole, the owner was like Henry Brabham, just total, you know, like hillbilly oil tycoon, like loaded, loaded. Yeah, carries a big forty-five. He's crazy, you know. There were oh, problems geez. in the bar. He pulled the gun out, put it to people's head. Like, Don't make me kill you, son. Oh yeah, it was crazy. Oh. It, was funny. it was nuts, man. I, I seen some shit in Roanoke, man. That was funny. <laughs> I was kind of telling riles about i guess i think you were telling me you drove a cab for a job too oh right? yeah like, yeah my dad yeah, yeah my dad had a taxi business you know what i mean so it was great money i mean like yeah honestly you know because you're not paying you usually got to rent to work there and stuff like that you pay the owner you know what i mean but yeah. my dad was like yeah hey, yeah go drive cab it was fun man you fight a lot you know i, yeah. I fight yeah. every day i used to drive taxi i think i was like playing a hockey game you just get fights easy man they get in your car all hammered up and you like have to <laughs> get out of home where they don't want to pay. And it was fun, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's fun. You got the green light again to just pound yeah. faces. Oh, dude, people don't pay it for their taxi. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this one time I'm driving cab and I'm, it's like maybe three o'clock in the morning. And I'm, I'm like down on Sherbrooke, you know, in that in the hood there, Riles. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah, like really bad. And this guy comes out of one night. It was like, I, I can't remember what bar it was. So he gets in the fucking cab. He's got to be like seven feet tall, man. Good fucking 350, 400 pounds. So he gets in the car. His head's turned sideways because he can't fit in the car. And his, his one side of his body's touching the door. The other side's touching me. And I'm like, holy fuck, we had a size of this big motherfucker. <laughs> and I'm like, I hope he behaves. You know what I mean? It's like, I hope he behaves. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, oh my God. So he goes, he, he says, pull in here. Like we go, it's like a $7 fare. You know what I mean? And he fucking pulls in this. He goes, pull in the alley. And I'm like, oh fuck, here we go, man. <laughs> You know, and I, he's like, I'm not paying. And I'm like, yeah, well, hey, seven bucks, man. It's like, you yeah, have it. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, so then he's like, so he gets out of the car. And he's like, fuck you. He's kind of losing it. And he walks around to the front. It's my old man's cab. Eh? And he takes his fist like Donkey Kong and whacks the hood. And I'm like, oh, now you got to fucking piss me off. Eh? So I get out, I open the door. I'm like, what's your fucking problem? And he comes walking over, dude. I grab my dad's mace. I sprayed this motherfucker in the face and I beat it. I left him for dead. I kicked the living shit out of him. I was kicking him in the face and I'm like, oh, fuck, I think I killed him. So it's like three in the morning, minus 40 outside. And I'm like, oh, fuck it. I leave him. I call my old man. He's like, I said, dad, I fucking think I killed this fucker. He's like, were you sure? And I'm like, yeah. He goes, where? And I'm like, I, dude, I don't know. I, I, he goes, okay, come and get me. So I fucking drive from fucking Sherbrooke all the way out to pass the perimeter, like West St. Paul, which is like a good 
35, 40 minutes. I grab my dad, we drive back, and here, like 40 minutes later, minus 40, there's some people in alley trying to pick this fucking Godzilla up. You know, he's bleeding <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> and my dad's like, oh, he's alive. Let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, maybe in a coma, but he's oh alive. my god! Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, they were bragging about. There's like four people. Like you need a crane to pick this motherfucker up, man. <laughs> <laughs> On episode 28, the captain Claude Giroux joined us. G gave us some insight on the different coaches he played for in Philly. G, I was going to ask you. Uh, you've been, obviously you've been here a while now, but uh, five coaches. Um, you've been through five different coaches, and they all have different uh things i know uh i know you enjoyed chief i'm not saying he's your he was your favorite obviously but i mean because you, you had a good relationship as far as i know with all the coaches um but uh we always kind of bring chief up because he's been a guest on here obviously and i know there's more than a few times he make you laugh during the game that's the funny yeah. that's the funny thing about chief but uh yeah like i said you've had five coaches um you know like I don't want to say who's your favorite, but like, what, what, what did you like about like, you know, Labby or Chief or, or Johnny Stevens, which, you know, you yeah, know, I mean, along, but. I mean, I got along well with all the coaches and uh, like you said, it's like everybody has their own way of coaching. And I mean, I don't really think of any of those coaches that were similar. I mean, you have yeah. uh, John Stevens, that's one guy that really pushed me and, he literally told me, if you're not the hardest working guy, you're, you're not going to play for me. So what I did, I just started working harder than, than I was. So, um, he was, uh, he, he, he was great. And then, then Lavi, Lavi's intensity, he's like, he motivates the boys get going. He, um, you know, be, being obviously going to the Stanley Cup finals with him, it was, uh, it was awesome. He's, um, he finds, he finds ways to, to get the players to, to play for each other. And to make it feel like a family, and um, we've had some good years together for sure. Yeah. And then obviously Chief, Chief. Um, I remember when I beat him arm wrestling? Yes, <laughs> that's what I was saying. Yeah. Oh, that was amazing. That's impressive. Yeah, I should, I should have just retired right there. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. So I beat him, and then he goes, "Okay, we're going again." And I'm like. Okay. And then he beat me. I'm like, can we keep it even? Like we're done. Yeah, let's, we're He's even. all fired up. <laughs> no grudge match. <laughs> he would, yeah. he would be fired up. <laughs> awesome. Um, That's... yeah, I, I liked, um, I, you know, like in Philly, I really, I was, I was upset when chief got fired. Cause obviously I've known him for basically my whole life and good buddy. You hate to see anybody lose their job, but, um, Hack, you know, I really liked Hack, and I don't. The people that, you know, it's like Riley, kind of like what you said, and we've we've talked about this before, but you know, well, he's too stoic on the bench. Well, you don't see him when he's not on the bench. You don't see him underneath and when he's pissed off. Right. And, you know, not all coaches are going to flip out, waving their arms and screaming and yelling. He's just a different kind of guy. But I really liked Hack, and I know you liked Hack too because yeah. I remember the day he uh, he had to go and and you know, you see him in the hallway there and then he came down and it, it was, it, those things are tough to see, yeah. but uh, I really liked Tack. Um, I thought he was, you know, I thought he did a good job and, um, you know, get this new coach, got AV in there. He's got an unbelievable resume and next year is going to be, you know, a good year. I really believe that. Yeah, I do. I, I, I think so too. They're going back to hack. I think uh, the passion he's got for the game and, uh, his work ethic. I mean, every day, every day he was going. And we're trying to figure out things, and um, my great coach, and uh, obviously didn't end up great. But uh, you know, we had the, we had some good good years uh, with him for sure. Yeah, and, uh, good yeah. man, really good man. Yeah, mm -hmm. There's not a, not a whole lot of room for error in in coaching pro sports. You know, you don't have much of a much much of an opportunity if you don't if you don't win the first you know couple of years you know you're 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 rode out of town but i i didn't play for hack but i worked with him in in preseason and stuff like that and communicated with him i, I really liked his, his his attitude towards the game and he communicated well i thought and uh you know i th i think uh you know he might, might have got a short end of the stick there but that's just the way the game works and yeah. 
Um, you know, and then you said uh, Nas there, you know, the, the whole, whole, you know, presentation of how he is on the bench. And I think John Stevens, he got ripped on for that too, is that, you know, and, and I find it ironic because, you know, John, part of Johnny's message was just to like, to, to like maintain composure, right? Like you don't want to, sh- you know, you don't want to show everybody that you're like the village idiot and you're like losing control. So like, I learned a lot from Johnny with that message of like not like blowing a gasket every time something goes wrong and, and freaking out because it's easy to do. Um, and, you know, a hack, I think, was a similar way on the bench. And then you got Lavi in between, you know, Lavi's like pulling his hair out and up and down. And up and down. <laughs> the, the boys, the boys used like to yell freaking. at me for giving him those pills. He'd start uh, the game as soon as the puck pills, dropped. Pills, giving him five-hour like, energies, 10-hour well, energies, p- yeah, pill. We had, I mean, we had the, well, he drank, it didn't help he drank seven cups of black coffee from 3.30 <laughs> to 5.30. Like, I don't know how you can even put that many in your body. And then he had the – not only did I get him those Red Bulls, but he had the Red Bull shots, a full uh, Red Bull and just a little thing. And then he would ask me for one of those pills, which was just a GNC pill. It was a workout pill, but – it got him over the top, and the puck would drop, and it was all over. He's oh, yeah. red. I'm like, this guy's gonna drop. Yeah, right back to like nasty, like stop it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. He was vowing it before the game even started. He was we're we're actually going going off. Off. Like, Come on, nasty. Like, yeah. what are you doing here? You gotta stop giving him those pills, Wait, man. Do you remember with John Stevens when he was coaching? We were practice, and we were doing morning skate, and. Everybody had man, we're doing breakouts, mandatory sauce. So everybody's doing <laughs> sauce. And then at one point, uh, John goes, Okay, like, just blows the whistle, no more sauce, tape to tape only, no more sauce. So Richie's line goes up and it goes D to D. He gets in the middle, goes to pass it, goes on his backhand, makes it a backhand pass, and then Johnny just loses. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's laughing and just that, that kind of team we had. It was loose. Johnny's and... eye. That oh yeah, it was, I was probably my just... first year, and I'm just like, what is going on? Yeah. Why right. why <laughs> <to the> coach? <laughs> <laughs> now we're gonna throw it back to when Hall of Fame defenseman Chris Pronger joined us on episode 12, where he talked about his reputation as a dirty player. Hey, what Prongs, I was going to ask you, like, despite being known as, like, a skilled defenseman, uh, would you ever consider yourself a dirty hockey player? Um, sure. I mean, dirty, dirty is a, you know, there's a lot of gray areas involved. Um, I would say I'd be willing to, you know, I, I want to win, just like anybody else. And as big a target as I had on my back, I was going to make sure I took a pound of flesh out of anybody who came near me. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, you know, I think a lot of people don't realize that I had guys taking runs at me constantly. And, you know, yeah. And then you got to make sure that they know, okay, if, if you're going to do that, you're going to feel some pain. <laughs> you know, you're going to, you're not going to like it. So. Uh, you know, and then, and then it's, and then it's about taking a number and finding them when they're in a, an untoward position and sorry. Yeah. Right. I, I remember, uh, prongs. I'm sure you remember this. We were, uh, it was after we had lost it was the next season and we're playing Chicago that week and prong yeah. says, Hey, Nas, come here, get me a new pair elbow pads and cut the back off, off of them. I said, what? He's like, I want this thing to come right off my arm. You remember who you were going after? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, and he got his in the game before we played him. <laughs> it was Burrage. Oh, no, no way. And he, wanted, he, he wanted a piece of this. He goes, I don't care if he's, he says no, he's going to get it. So I cut the back piece of these elbow pads off for him, had him. And then he got hurt, and he couldn't play. And I remember saying, "Hey, he's he's our, you're like luckiest luckiest dude in the world right now." <laughs> he got <laughs> stuck in the face. Oh, it's even great. gonna get something in the face from from the beast. Yeah, that's so good. Well, the only reason I asked you that was, that, you know, I know you played the game hard. I was kind of making a joke when I said that, but um, you know, knowing that you had been suspended eight times, but you you played the game hard, and you know, you're you're an honest player, right? I mean, it was I, I don't even think dirty was the word I should have used, but um, you, you're you know, you're greasy, you're hard nosed, and 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 everyone knew what they were getting when they played against you, and you established that. I think that's 
what what you know what tough good players do right i mean you, you know you're creating space for yourself you know you're probably able to b- break the puck out a lot better since you you're you playing that way right i mean you're giving yourself that extra space and you know part um, of you know, part just, of it part of it was early on and and even prior to the nhl I was always unpredictable, not knowing, you know, I might hit you, I might spear you, I might slash you, I might cross check you and keeping your opponent on edge and, and kind of leery of, of what you, you may do. Um, you know, I think, you know, as opposed to dirty, unpredictable, you, you know, unpredictable. Like, I might, I might steal the puck from you. I might run you through the boards. I might, you know, cross check you. I might, you know stick you in the nuts i mean who knows yeah you know and, and half the time up. half the time i didn't know yeah yeah it was, it was spontaneous right <laughs> yeah, I, honestly yeah. it was it was just like you know what what looked like it was gonna you know at that split second yeah what am i gonna do bang and yeah. it just happened and... <laughs> next up we have another towering defenseman sam moran joined us and talked about going from defenseman to forward and back to defense, along with his first NHL goal and his run-in with Brendan Lemieux. I was going to ask you to walk uh, walk us through going into last season in your mentality, because I know we had a conversation in the summertime. You got a, you had a meeting with uh, Alain Vigneault, and there was an adjustment to your your, your position <laughs> and, 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 and mm-hmm. the whole bit. But to walk us through all that, because I know there was a lot of... Uh, the question marks and, you know, cha- changing the game plan up a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. and then it kind of worked out in your favor in the end. Oh, oh yeah, obviously. Uh, so all that worked out, I think it was in September. I was uh, the only one in Philly, you know, uh, kind of working hard, really working hard on the bike and stuff like this, just running, uh, really, just working h- hard. And uh, and that he, uh, Jan Lapper came, told me, say, hey, if he wants to meet with you uh, after your workout. And I was like, oh, okay, that's, that's crazy. Like coach wanted to talk to me. I didn't know he like in my mind, he's like, I, I don't even know if he knows I'm still there, you know? Like, yeah, just <laughs> right. like, and, uh, I was like, okay. Like, I, and I went there and he kind of explained me a little bit what happened during the bubble hockey. And, uh, they were trying to find that phys- physical guy, but they can't really find it anywhere right now in the league. They're kind of pretty rare now. And he's like, yeah, I, I want you to, to, to s- maybe consider play forward for me and, and on the fourth line and and see how it's gonna go. I, I need like a I need a guy that can fight. Obviously not fight, but just yeah get a presence there, you know, and because obviously in the organization we have no one. Even now, like I'm I'm sure they're gonna try to get some other guys, but something we need to get better at. And uh yeah, and as soon I was like I was I was really shocked. I think I was like, man, I'm not doing that. What the hell is this? <laughs> like uh <laughs> this kind of sucks. But I, I, like, I'm, basically, I'm a defensive defenseman, and I, I, I hate the other side of the blue, the, the red line. Like, but not I hate it, but like, like you know, like I, I just like offensively, like I, I can, I know what to do as a D man, but I'm not, I'm not a flashy guy for any means. I'm just like shoot the puck on the head, give it the, the puck to goals, and let him do his stuff. Like that was my game plan, you know. Yeah. Defensively, obviously, I'm in my kitchen there, and I really like to be in the defensive side of the puck. But uh, yeah, so I, I make like I call my agent and see what he said. And uh, my agent, uh, Pat Brisson, obviously was like, man, like just the fact that an NHL coach tell you that he's willing to give you a shot, you, you need to take it. You need to try and you need to have a good attitude and try to do it. And after that, I kind of like, yeah, I was like, yeah, he's kind of right. Talk to my parents a little bit. And uh, and uh, obviously I make a couple of phone calls. Uh, I see a little bit of the guys that have that role. And obviously, Riles was on, uh, I think Riles was one of the first one I call with uh, Chris Stewart, you know, Chris Stewart, really good guy. Mm-hmm. And uh, and Riles, I was like, and you told me that the same thing. I was like, Stewart told me the same thing. You just chip it. Like, you need to put the puck deep, finish your hit, go change. <laughs> and that's it. And, 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 like, you know, like, it's just, and that, that was a little bit the thing. And uh, obviously, uh, for me, uh, I knew, I, I knew I need to prove that I can be one of the toughest guys in the league, but in my head, I kind of knew it. I can do it. It's something I was really good with the Phantoms, and obviously I didn't do it in a long time, but I was uh, I was just willing to do it, you know? Like, I, I want to – I know, like, right now, it's something I, I, I need to do. And, uh, yeah, and Riles gave me one of his coach that he had back then, and he was really good with me. I got to 
work with him in uh, in August again, and it takes him actually. And Marco, uh, Marco yeah, Razzo. yeah. Yeah, yeah, Marco Rizzo. Yeah, Greg guy. Oh, right. so funny. Miles, don't, yeah. don't do that anymore. Don't, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 You were bigger back then. That's yeah. I, hear. I mean, yeah. I see picture to your neck was huge. I was fat. <laughs> I was a fat ass. Yeah. Was, yeah. Oh, you were tough, man. I mean, uh, you you coached me to Fentos. You were freaking crazy, man. You had a bad look crazy. You were awesome, but you were like fired up. I loved it. Oh, You're yeah, such a man. good coach. An but yeah, but game. you know, I call you and. Yeah, yeah, it is. But you, you give me some great advice, and uh, and I really appreciate that because obviously, Riles, you you've been my coach, and I still uh, think high of you and all that stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Well, you made you know you made the right choice. I mean, you had a good attitude. Um, you know, obviously, it didn't it didn't work out up front the way you know you had envisioned it, and there's probably some disappointment when you land up going back to the Phantoms. But you go back to the Phantoms on D and you yeah and you play very well and you get the call yeah and now you're back up on D and, and you look comfortable yeah. and you look ready to rock and yeah and, yeah, and, and rock really solid good. really that's a crazy story about it that's like uh so obviously like what happened the only reason why I went back down is because there were so many injuries D back there and uh, with the Phantoms so uh Chuck uh after a game he, he comes see me he's like hey Sammy like uh, there's a ton of Ton of uh, intro guys on D right now uh, at the Phantoms. We need you to go back and play. I think Frido Friedman was just get picked up in the waivers and stuff like this, you know. Yeah. And uh, so they didn't have any D. So uh, I go, I go. I'm like, and as soon as he, they told me that, I was, I was with Daniel Breer actually, like uh, um, Danny B uh, doing some some uh, extra stuff for him. And that was my last practice as a forward, and I was so happy, man. <laughs> when they told me, when they told me. Just go. You need to go play some D, D, uh, like go play defense there. Uh, and my first game against Hershey, I was so happy, like in the warm up and stuff. You know, I was just like, I was like, man. This, <laughs> and uh, first chef, like I do a good first. You know, I just good do a good first pass and all that stuff. And I had a great game that game. And I, uh, and yeah, I was like, man, I, I loved it. And I played another game against Hershey. And after that, I talked to Gordo a little bit and I told him, you know, like, I don't think I can do it anymore. I can't be a forward. And he was like, I think you should call Chuck. And uh, that's what I did. I called Chuck and I told him what I was thinking that kind of what I want to do. And he was like, obviously if you, it's, it, he, was, he was okay with this but you're going to probably going to stay in the Phantoms. And I was like, yeah, it's fine with me. Like, you know, it's, I, I give it a try. And, uh, it would imagine I'd give it a try and I just don't feel comfortable doing it. And, and yeah. And all of a sudden Philly struggle and you get a call and that was scored your first goal. And yeah. that was like only in like two or three weeks, you know, and I've been winning for that opportunity all my life. Like it, it was crazy. You know, yeah, it goes so fast. Yeah. That was awesome. We were, hmm. you know, every week we have our, our, we do our show here and, and mm-hmm. we uh, have other things that we jump on with other people and we were, we were crying for Big Sam. Yeah. Uh, crying. Know, to be, call to this be, guy up. Well, call yeah, up. like we, we were, <laughs> you know, we were we were ready and we know you're ready because we both know you so well. But the, the best thing that one of the things that we talked about, we did a post game one night. It might have been the night he, he scored eh, Riggs. Was yeah, it, it was. We did mm-hmm. a post. We did a post game and you just. The whole game, not because you scored the goal, Sammy, but it was the way you played. You just made you made it look easy. You you just you got the puck. You made the pass. If you didn't have a pass, you got it out of the zone. Nothing's happening, but you're a presence that they need. You have to have a presence, and you bring that, which you know. Um, yeah. And then to top it off, you score your first NHL goal. It gives me chills just because. <laughs> It was so yeah. it was so great to see you finally get that, but just the way the team reacted, you could just tell. And we 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 talked about it a lot. You could tell you're like a a, a team favorite guy. Like it, you're fun to have around. Like I said before, but it was awesome to see that. You know, lots came flying. I mean, they were literally jumping up and down like it was a damn soccer oh my goal God, or bro. something. It, but it was great. It was great. <laughs> oh. Like we. We, I just came off the yeah. couch. I know we, we were all talking yeah. about it, but that was just what, what a night, yeah. man. Yeah, what a moment. Yeah, that was, oh my God, yeah, that was, I remember going to the bench and actually, like, I was just on the ice when I score and I go to the bench and I just, 
like, I can't play anymore, man. I just can't <laughs> play. It was like, Yosi, Yosi was like, was like, yeah, that's why, bro. I was like, I was going to put Provi in the ice. It's fine. I was like, yeah, I was like, I can't do it. You bench yourself. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. I was like, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. I was Dude. like, yeah, I bench myself. Honestly, I did. I was like, I score. Like, I had my, 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 uh, my strap was uh, undone. I, I didn't have my gloves on me. I was like, so. <laughs> what the? What is going did, on? It was so did, funny. Did you watch? Uh, did you watch the replay a few times? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I watched. It's like, why my strap is undone? I have no gloves. <laughs> I'm looking at the best Rangers. I'm chirping uh, that Smith guy. I'm like, what is going on? They're like, I got no idea. I sit on the bench. I'm like, everyone is like, what the hell? I was like, yo, see, I'm done. I'm done. Four minutes left in the game. <laughs> Put other guys on the ice. <laughs> it, was like, it was so funny, but it was a great moment. And I know the boys like, oh my God, I, my teammates are everything for me. And they're my best friends. And I think they, they, they went through the same, like they saw me grinding out in the gym. And obviously you saw it, Nasty, you were yep. there. Yep. And uh, it was such a long road for me. And it was the best moment in my life by far. Like, you know, you get drafted, it's cool. You pay your first initial goal is cool, but the way that happened to me was the oh my god! I was I was like, what is going on there? I couldn't believe it. Yeah, I was like, man, I was ready to like when I got I was ready to stop playing because I was like, man, like my body just can't hold up anymore. It sucks, but just the way it is. And now I'm playing in NHL again, which was my dream when I was like I I decided to play hockey. I was pretty young, at 12 years old. Like I was like, I'm gonna be an NHL player, and it was just crazy, you know? Yeah. yeah. No, it was yeah. so fun. It was so fun to watch, man. I wish I, I wish I could have been there, but uh, I got to see yeah. it. It was awesome. It was awesome. Yeah, you're part of it, Nasty. You know it. I love you, buddy. <laughs> yeah. oh, I, lo- I love you too, buddy. Yeah. yeah. And, and leading up to your goal there, I think that the game before is when you, you, you pounded on uh, Brendan Lemieux. But when you got called up, I think oh, the yeah. Flyers were – I guess at a crossroads of their season, there was, they were, they were lacking that energy and that mm-hmm. spirit. And then, you know, we had talked about it like on, you know, on the show and stuff about like the flyers, like we, they need something, you need some sort of spark. And I was like, you know, when you got called up, I was like, this is it, man. Like, this is what exactly what the, what they needed. Um, and then you, you had a couple of good games and, and then you pounded that Lemieux and then, and then you got fined for it and you scored the next game. But then all of a sudden there was like this, it was just like a you know a, an added an added uh, energy that was in the lineup that you know um, obviously you're one guy and you, you know you have to these other guys have to be able to generate their own energy but you know for that brief period it seemed like wow it's like you know one guy could actually come in and, and make a significant difference as far as energy goes so it was nice to see and I think that was a a testament to all your hard work and your attitude and everything you poured into it. Um, but obviously it's a team game and you know that can only sustain yeah. itself so long and then you have to have other elements uh, that can can help uh, bring energy too which i didn't think the team as an as a system didn't do a very good job towards the end of the season but um you talk about oh, that okay. fight a little Pretty bit shitly. yeah what's that oh go go for it uh, yeah we get a shit here yeah okay. yeah, yeah 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 i don't want to say that yeah it was but i was gonna say it is yeah that, that fight with lemieux uh, you know i i, I know the way it started and everything like that, but I, I I love your attitude in that fight. Is you didn't give him a chance, you didn't give him a chance to um to to make a decision, you know, because most of the times he would just like yap and then he would like skate away. But I know you got fined for it. It's probably not so much what you did; it was more the timing of it because it was like four minutes, maybe maybe less. It was like a minute and a half in the game. Uh, I think I took his hair and I pulled. Tony on the ice. Yeah, oh, man, that, I hate that guy. Yeah, but, but I mean, <laughs> think about how much that space he got from that. Think about that. Not that you didn't have space before. No. You're six foot six, yeah. you know, and tough. And then, you know, you do something like that, you get a lot of street credit. Yeah. And you play the Rangers, I think, yeah. the next game. And, you know, you, they obviously have a lot of respect. Oh, I, I, like, obviously, like, I mean, what happened on this day is like, I mean, obviously, I wanted to fight him. Him and Smith, like, those two, man, I hate such pretenders. It's insane. Like, you know what? Pretenders are the worst. Like, they, they're like, kind of like, you know, that's what they are, pretenders. Uh <laughs> it's just the way it is but uh uh so like yeah so lemieux is just yapping at her bench like crazy and i just finished my shift and like coos look at me say hey, lemieux is fucking yapping like 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 can you do something and i'm just like <laughs> i'm oh, on yeah. the other side of the bench i'm on the i'm not i'm a demon so like the, you know it's, it's not it's not close to the their bench and i'm just like running 
like you know from the d to the forward side like absolutely running and like I, I don't know what i was saying i was just shaking like i was like <laughs> sit down man i gotta kill you like <laughs> just like, i think it was tripping lots or something yeah obviously i love lots so you don't trip lots yeah. but anyway <laughs> <laughs> That's i was just rule. freaking out like you know like like I was like, just sit down. You're the biggest pretender ever, and no one likes you. Like, like your teammate. That's why you got traded. You know, no one likes you. So after that, yeah, at the end of the game, I was like, I saw an opportunity to just like grab him, and I was like, you know what? I gotta drop my gloves, and I hope he does because I gotta punch him in the face. And I was, I gotta give him credit. He dropped his gloves. That's good. I mean, I actually. And after that, I was just. I just wanted to hurt. Her. No, I don't want to say hurt him, but like at least he dropped his gloves. So I didn't aspect for that, but it's just you, you know, and yeah, and because like no one, it's hard to find partners now. Obviously, there's a lot of tough guys in other side of the West and stuff. So I would like to try that out a little bit, but it's hard to find partners. You know, it's uh, yeah. just not the same, and and uh, yeah, it's the way it is. Even against Washington, pretty physical team. Like no one to do nothing with me, man. On episode 10, Zach Ronaldo joined us and had a hilarious story about the first impression he made in his first development camp. I'll never forget, the fr- I'm pretty sure it was your first development camp, and they actually changed the rule with the Flyers after that because, <laughs> let me explain, Riles, you were playing. Yeah. So me and Riley go out, and we, of course, everyone wants to watch the scrimmage. No one's really yeah. caring about the practices and what you guys are going through. So me and Riles go stand out in the corner. Within six minutes, you had put four players out of commission, and I mean mm-hmm. out of commission. And I remember re- me and Riley were talking about this yesterday. We were like, holy shit, you hit someone. I don't know. One guy I know for sure, you probably remember who all of them were, but you hit two guys, probably two shifts in a row. They literally carried them off the ice. <laughs> yeah. You caught someone coming around the back of the neck like two shifts later, and we're just sitting there going, this kid can hit, man. Mm. And uh, David Laliberte tried to grab you because he didn't know what to do. Yeah, like you, you hit yeah, another yeah. guy. You literally took three yeah. players out, not in a dirty way either. I mean, no, they were clean, clean yeah. ass hits, hard, yeah. clean hits. And I think we can get into it later, but I think a lot of times you've gotten kicked out of games where you shouldn't have because you hit so damn hard. And that's why yeah. I say you're like a shark. We used to say, even Chief would, Craig Barubi would say, it's like a shark, man. Yep. Like it, it's a talent to be able to catch guys nowadays with the league, you hit a guy too hard, the arm goes up just because their head flies and you hit him right in the chest. But anyway, back to the story. Poor Lally comes and grabs you because he doesn't know what the hell to do. I don't even know if the guy had ever been in a fight. And you one punch the poor bastard. And I love David. I I haven't talked to him in years. What a good kid. You catch him right in the chin. He goes down. And me and Riles are like, oh, my God. Like This guy's a wrecking ball. So we go back in. You had to come off because you kind of hurt your hand, I guess, when you hit him. And I'll never forget him and I are sitting in my office, and you came down the hallway. You had your hand iced up, and you know, I barely knew you. It's your first first yeah. camp, Riley, and you were like, hey, Cote, that was for you, man. <laughs> and, and we were like, I was like, I love this guy, oh, man. Yeah. And then Riley was just dying, and then sure enough, obviously, we get to know you, but – uh it was a hell of a first impression, oh, yeah, and they stopped the scrimmages after <laughs> yeah. that. We didn't have yeah. scrimmages for since then that I can yeah. remember like yeah. like that. They did three on three stuff, three yeah. on three games instead of a five on five because of you. Which, hey man, heads up, boys. Yeah, right. You know? I mean, God, thank God. If you hit me that hard, I would. I'd probably be dead. But at least the guys <laughs> were me, dead. They told me before the scrimmage not to hit. <laughs> like not to not to like fucking kill people Jeez. and i thought to myself i said that's not hockey right i'm not gonna I'm not gonna not hit like i'm here to make the team right. this is what i want to do right and i didn't care what anyone told me so <laughs> i kind of made a point to hit a little harder just to prove but kind of put it in their face like no this is what i'm here for i'm not here to pussyfoot around this is what i'm here for I'll make the team and yeah that they uh they stopped the scrimmages after that <laughs> I, re- I remember um, Mr. Holmgren coming down and he said, let me guess who your favorite player is now. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, 
pretty easy there, yeah, man. Right. You know, the, yeah. but uh, but again, they were clean. It wasn't like you elbowed someone in the head. No, I mean, they no. were just honest to God. Hits to the chest, guys with their heads down. I mean, after the first hit, if I'm playing in that scrimmage, oh, I'm looking around to see where 63 is. I think that was the first number you had. It may have been something else your very first year, but mm-hmm. um, but that's I would have been was. looking for you. Like that's was it 60? Like, oh no, yeah, like like the, that's how it was. The scrimmage is like 11, 12 years ago, it was kill or be killed. Oh, yeah, yeah. for sure. Oh, yeah. Like, I was prepared to fight every single shift because that back then, that's how you, like, yep. made an impression. Even yep. if you weren't a tough guy, you had to go to camp and at least fight once just to prove, like, hey, I can handle be- grown men. Right. So that's how it was. It was a kill or be killed atmosphere. And, and to me, I wasn't a high draft pick, so I had to go and – had that have that mindset so that's what i did chris versteeg joined us on episode 20 where he talked about how good that 2011 team was and a good story about a couple russians that were on that team that um, team is so good man though yeah that was a good team man we talked about that before uh, i don't remember who was all it was beast because prongs got hurt if he hadn't no. got hurt i mean i you never know you always say what if but <clears throat> you're right it was a good team it was a really good team i posted that thing today where we scared you oh you did <laughs> yeah <laughs> the old stick bag he, it was that yeah he hadn't been there long i guess he'd been there about a week so i was like i gotta get this little. oh I yeah was like, oh, ottawa or tampa uh, we were in ottawa we were in ottawa yeah and I, that when we got you but it's funny that i turn the camera and you see jeff carter palsy poo daryl pal oh yeah and uh jared Ev, car bomb i'm just like God, i was looking at it today i've seen that thing a hundred times but i was like geez what a team that was actually a really good team man oh yeah jared was my roommate oh boy how was yeah. that you had you had to have a roommate then was the rule not there you after no, so many games or it whatever? was before the it was the year after was the lockout about a, two, a year and a half later oh okay yeah you're um, right. yeah yeah i remember he smoked though oh. <laughs> yeah yeah that poor guy, the pan on and cigarettes Cigarettes, yeah. He'd turn the fan on in the, the bathroom and have a cigarette. Well, you know what else, uh, Steger, I meant to say about our nights in the spring uh, was Johnny, our driver, our oh. buddy. Good man. Um, see him every once in a while. Not very often, but I saw him about two months ago, I think. I think it was about two months ago, but he ended up taking over. He's, he started taking care of Jared Ebb. Is that how you met him, actually? Maybe that's so, how you met him. So this is how I met him. He Jared Ebb didn't want to drive, and Bobrovsky didn't want to drive, so they hired John to drive him around. Yeah. And John ended up, after that, I needed to keep going to the hospital to get checked up in at the rink, and I didn't have a vehicle at that point because I sent it home. I think my girlfriend took it. She was my girlfriend at the time, wife now. She yeah. took it home, and he started driving me around and I got really close with him and then he got sick. I believe yeah, he I had a stroke. Poor he guy. had a stroke. Yeah, man. And so I was like, uh, Oh boy. Um, that that's not good, but I haven't talked to him in a few years, but that guy, man, I remember one night I got home and it was like, we got home, sorry, at like three, maybe three. Yeah. And, uh, I, I come outside and I'm like, okay, I got to get something to eat. So me and Brody, my friend who was staying with me, we go get something to eat. We come back, it's 8 a.m. And Johnny's sitting there in the parking lot with Bobrovsky and Jiradev. They're just sitting there. <laughs> and I'm like, what, have you, what are you guys doing? They're like, oh, we're just hanging out. I'm like, have you guys gone to bed yet? They're like, no, we've just been sitting here the last like four hours. I'm like, so John is sleeping now because that's yeah. how, that's, yeah. what he, that's what he did. Yeah. He just drove. So. I mean, amazing guy. I, I I always worry about him since he had a stroke. Yeah. Um, salt, and I think his daughter ended up driving for a little bit, from what I heard. But I haven't yeah. talked to him in a few years. But man, Johnny, he is the funniest guy. He was awesome, man. Oh, right. I don't know if you ever got to meet him, Riles. I've he, heard he, stories. That I'm yeah, he's. Him. I got a couple good ones that we'll we won't say today because. Uh, family friendly here. <laughs> yeah. but i got some and you know how you get all wound up seager in his voice uh, oh my god little, he's, little, a, he's greek right you yeah can't greek understand. guy he can't understand he's talking so fast and, oh, oh my god don't do that in here and then, oh boy <laughs> 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 
<laughs> this man saw more stuff. He saw more shit going on than, it, than a lot of people did. Was but. that was that the same driver as uh, Kyle Calder? I, same was that same driver that have him ripping around all the time? No, I don't think so. No, he okay, wasn't. He so wasn't around. Crazy yet. stories. Yeah. Oh, in Greece, there's another one. He was a beauty. Oh boy. I, I don't know oh, who he God. drove before. I just knew he. I just knew he started with Jaredev, but I know when Jaredev left, he left all his stuff. Hey, he everything. Just, Everything. And, and so Johnny got it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He so, put it. He put it in another storage unit or something. And he kept asking me, "What do I do?" I'm like, "Dude, he's not coming back. <laughs> like, sell it or something because he's not coming back. You're paying money to store his stuff." No, I don't know what. Left, I don't know. What uh, he, he left shoes, like expensive shoes. He left yep. belts. He said he left couches. And oh, yeah. so Johnny put it in and uh, we're all, he's always asking. He said, Jared, I was always like, I'm going to come back and get it. And I don't think he ever came back to get any of it. It he was never, like a full he, house worth of stuff. Wow. Oh yeah. Yeah, he did. Cause his, his daughter wanted the shoes. Cause the wife had like 50 pair of shoes, like brand new in box. Yeah, and like that's expensive, what it was. Wow. expensive Score. shoes, man. <laughs> but Johnny was so afraid. I, he might come back. I, you know, I'm like, he ain't coming back, bro. Like this guy's not coming back. We couldn't let Richie go before he told us the story of him, Nasty, Chemo, and Prongs at the Olympics. Going back to the Olympics for a second, um, I think, is that where you met, Dewey, Dowdy? Yeah. Were you guys, I remember you guys kind of hanging with each other a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's where I met him. I, I met him at the summer camp oh, okay. for the Olympics, but yeah, yeah, that was, that was a riot there. Yeah, so I had a, I had a few nights where, I, I'm not going to lie to you, I may have I may not remember exactly what I was doing. I didn't get arrested, so that's always a good thing. Um, yeah. But uh, I'll never forget, you guys beat us, beat USA. I, like, I wasn't playing, obviously. Yeah. Uh, what a game. Uh, Zach Parise ties it. I mean, yeah. I went from the highest I've ever been. Then oh, Sid's yeah. got a berry one, of course, the golden goal. But uh, I remember after the game, you know, going, saying hey to you, giving you a hug and everything, and – you were like, hey, like, I'll message you if you want to come. I'm like, well, I got to go with my yeah, team. Yeah. Those guys are just lost, <laughs> you know. But uh, we actually, medalist, you know, here. <laughs> you talk about, like, it, it was about, I mean, those guys were, they were guys crying. I mean, obviously devastated. Yeah. I mean, that, that was probably the closest since the 80. Well, definitely had to be the closest since 80 of USA hockey. Yeah. And, you know, I thought, and we had beat you guys in the regular uh, round there, whatever you want to call it, the round robin. We had won. And I just remember being on the bench and, and Richie, I know you've been there as a player, Riley, you too, but you guys were up and, it, but the guys kept just, go, we're going to get one. We're going to, and we, we, yeah. we got one and I've got a great picture of me. I'm like jumped up, of course, because oh, you know yeah. how like low key I am. Yeah. Um, I'm jumped up and, and uh, Quickie had jumped up too. And he was the, th he wasn't dressed, but he was standing behind me at the sticks and he landed on me and he's not a small man. No, <laughs> he landed on me at one point and I kind of fell and all the boys are jumping up and down and I got my hands on the ground and I'm, I'm trying to hold my hands. But <laughs> I'm like, I just want to watch. see what's yeah. going on. But anyway, uh, after the game, we, you and I had talked for a couple minutes and obviously you're going to have some fun with the boys and, Speaking of Chris Pronger, Prongs comes over to me in the hallway. Now, he had his whole family there, so, you know, he's going yeah. right to his room. Uh, we had a 7 a.m. flight, yeah. uh, Mr. Snyder's jet. Uh, with Chemo was going to be on it, and uh, yeah. you and Prongs and myself. I don't know if I'm missing anyone. Um, I think Oscar Spartulis had left because yeah. he was there. Um, anyway, point of my story was Prongs comes and grabs me, and I'm still kind of down a little bit. And I'm like, yeah. well, he's like, hey, fool. Cause that's what, you know, that's what he always called me. I'm like, what's up, man? But yeah, I'm like, what's up beast. He goes, listen, I want to make you make sure you and Richie are on that plane, you know, on time. And I'm like, all right. Like, <laughs> really? You just want to go far. You just want to go metal, bro. Like, you yeah. know, like, kind of like laughing. He was like, no, I'm serious. Cause I know all you guys are going out and you should <sighs> got to enjoy it. I got the family here. I got to go. I'm like, all right, beast. Gotcha. 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 So it's, you know, it's like two in the morning and he's texting me, make sure you and Rick bone, you know, you and Richie are there. I ain't worried about chemo because chemo had his parents, yeah, and, yeah. his family. Sorry. And yeah. so like, like, all right. So I get back to the hotel, I get my stuff together. So I had been keeping in touch with Richie all, you know, about every hour 
So it's getting to be about 5.30. Now I'm getting a little <laughs> nervous. Like, where's my phone? So, I, so I'm texting, no answer. So I called your phone probably five times now. And it's like, <laughs> we needed to leave around six to get to the airport, right? Yeah. So Riggs, you'll enjoy this last part. But it's like quarter to six, six, seven phone calls. Finally, he answers. And there's like five minutes to six. And he answers like this. Hey, bro, what's up? <laughs> i'm like dude where are you i'm like prongs has called me 10 times we're supposed to be for an hour you where are you and he's like hey uh where are we and i said give, give that person a phone so he hands the phone over and, and i'm like hey listen this is life or death because we had asked mr yeah, Homer oh, yeah. to, to back the flight up because yeah. we were flying to tampa I mean, it would only make sense. Like, my God, you're playing the, the gold medal game. But yeah. anyway, anyway, Prongs is – he's calling me, he's yelling at me. I feel like my dad's on the phone with me yelling at me. And so Richie gets back. I said, 911, get this man in a cab. I got to meet him. He gets back. He's, I'm like, did you pack? Ah, no, not, not yet. And then I'm like, where's your gold medal? My mom's got it. Okay. All right. So anyway, the, the funny part is, Riles uh, – of course, I was shitting my pants because I did not want us to be late. Uh, one, because of the beast, you know, yeah, like right. Bronx, but uh, <laughs> Homer, too. Homer was adamant about us not being late. So uh, we get to the plane. We actually, Kimo waited on us and let us jump in his big van. Yeah. We get there, no prongs. No way. <laughs> so we're dying. It's like <laughs> 10 after 7. And uh we're just like me and rick boner kind of laughing and, and chemo you know like oh yeah, yeah, oh, like, yeah. he's so <laughs> he's up. so funny he kept kept making little comments so finally beast comes flying up in his limo or whatever he's got the two he's got the boys with him his, his wife and and they get on the plane and they're jumping around thing. and me and richie just want to go to bed richie's yeah. got the he's got the old eye car whatever you call those things but prongs gets on and i'm like yo beast what's up man we've been here like 45 minutes he's like this guy got fucking lost. He's losing. It. <laughs> if that would have been us, dude, they would have oh, taken oh, off. No. He would have taken off. He would have yeah. left. For we sure, he would have left. Uh, Richie, you better get the get on the horn. Get us a private yeah. a PJ going here. But I thought that was so funny because yeah. uh, prongs ended up being late instead of us. Oh yeah. And last but not least, the captain finishes us off. G tells a few funny stories about his competitive side. Sometimes things snowball and then you're trying too hard almost like people like, how can you try too hard? But you know what I mean? When you say you try, everyone's just trying so hard. And uh, it was so many, so many expectations, like you said, after last year and, and I uh, just, just couldn't get rolling and the COVID thing. I didn't think it was fair not to give you guys excuses. You guys never made an excuse, but I didn't think it was fair that you ended up playing a lot of games with not just two guys out, six guys out um i didn't think that was fair i thought saw a lot of teams get their games canceled uh more games than you die, you guys did anyway but it's still just just such a shit show from the bubble was hard you guys are away from your family and this year you're kind of in a bubble basically on the road because you can't really do anything um you know I, did that come into play at all you think you know with, with i know everybody has to well everybody's got like you said everybody's got pretty much the same schedule but you know you play seven games in like 12 days you're just like there's no recovery you can't wow. take care of your body as well it's kind of messed up and i think we'll let just like you said is like when you lose one you lose two and then you try to work a little harder try to do a little much and try to force it and then it just it gets worse and worse and you can't get out of it so uh, one example is one year I didn't score the start of the season for, for I think it was 18 games, and Paul Holmgren called me in his office and told me, "Gee, you're working too hard. Stop working too hard." And I look and I'm like, "What? Like, what? Like, what the hell do you want me to do? You want me to stop working?" He's like, "Yeah, work less. It's gonna work. Just relax. Like you're you're going way too hard." And I I got out of that meeting more confused and. Yeah. Than I kind of just relax and uh, yeah, went well after that. Well, that's you though. Like that's that's what I mean. You like you're you're such a competitor. I mean, with anything, you know, I've been around you a long time, and I've been fortunate enough to know you since you're a young kid. And uh, 
you're a competitive guy, man. I mean, you you think you could beat anyone in arm wrestling? And I've seen you beat <laughs> yeah, guys. Right, you yeah. I've seen you beat guys you shouldn't beat, actually. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say anything about it because you usually. <laughs> But, uh, you know, that's one of the great things about you and, and, and you being a captain and such a good captain is, you know, it's not always about the loudest guy, but it's I feel like being around you for so long. I, I, I really don't think I've ever seen you take a night off of a game and even practice. You practice hard, too. But uh, that's something that a lot of people can't say. But I know that's I know how competitive you are. And, you know, you get wound up. Yeah. You know, yeah. when things aren't going well and you should, and, I, and it's, I, I love that. I love that about you. And, um, you know, I know. Uh, the, the I remember uh, we were playing at home and uh, like we're known to like, give it to the refs a little bit. And, you know, <laughs> as, as captain, I had to tell the boys, boys, let's, let's stop yelling at the refs. And I'm, I'm, I'm probably one of the worst, to be honest, but I try to like calm down so everybody calms down. And then this one game, remember, I told the guys, just everybody relax. Just don't yell at the refs. Like, I'll go talk to them. Let's not yell from the bench. And then the ref does something, and all I hear is nasty behind me. Starts <laughs> yelling at the ref and give it to him. <laughs> right. And I turn around, and I'm like, nasty, shut up. <laughs> and he was so – you were so mad at me for the rest of the game. You wouldn't I talk know. to me. And then I'm like, <laughs> like maybe I should have, like, not – Yell at him, just like tell him. I just, I just, and we go back to the bench, go back to the, uh, go back to the room after the game we won, and we just looked at each other and we just started, like, started laughing. Just, <laughs> yeah, he was just, right though, and he did say that a lot. Boys, leave the rest alone. But one of my favorites was a couple of years ago with G, and I, I busted out laughing because they went to video review, and Hack was the coach, Dave Hackstall, and Hack says. All right, boys, kind of guys are around the bench. And he's like, all right, boys, whatever happens here, just stay calm. If it's a goal, we're good. If it's not, just stay calm. And it's not, like none of the guys are talking. And she, she jumps over the boards and goes, if they don't call this goal, I'm going to fucking lose it. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> and I started fucking dying. And Hack just put his head down, sir, laughing. I said, holy fuck. But G, 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 you're known a little bit. You chirp a little bit. I don't know if people know, but that's that's another thing I love about you. Yeah, you got to like talk. Chirps. One of my favorites was uh, we were talking about was um, when you came back from the concussion. God, way back, I think 2012 was. Uh, I think it was here we had Yogs. And uh, anyway, you're taking the face off with Otter. Remember you you'd miss a bunch of games and you had a hell of a game. I think you had four points that game. You're coming back from a concussion and. They're, they're getting ready to take the face off and they're mic'd because the HBO was following the team around, yeah. following us around it. And, and she says, uh, Oh, are you, you taking this face off? And Otter right away, you know, he's a chirper. He's like, Oh, fifth in the league. I'm fifth in the league. You're good. You're, the, you're a good player, but I'm a good player too. And she said, I, I didn't say you weren't a good player. He says, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm fifth in the league. I'm going to win this thing straight back. They drop it, G, just right back Clean to the win. D. I can't remember yeah. who's on the. Oh, just right back. <laughs> Fuck, I laughed my ass off. And it was good That's because it was really like, tripping, like it's just, No, I know. It was true. Yeah. Stuff. It was funny, though. But you got him wound up so much from and that video. I knew video it was mic'd up. I knew it was mic'd up. So I'm like, I got to win this one. <laughs> yeah, you got to win it. And then he was so wound up. He, he, remember, he went after Labby. Yeah, Labby, like, it was the whole yeah. thing. It was kind of funny. But yeah, was awesome. I was glad that was you were mic'd for that so people could hear a little bit of it. Yeah. <laughs>